Hello, I am Yen from We Learn to Share. This video is about prior knowledge needed to know before learning about IB higher level chemistry. First, it is important to know how to write the chemical compounds and write in chemical symbols. Let's start with naming the ionic compounds, specifically simple ionic compounds. Simple ionic compound is made from a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion. To read the simple ionic compounds, we write the name of the ion according to the periodic table and change the ending of an anion to IDE. For example, NaCl is read sodium chloride with an IDE ending. To write a formula for the simple ionic compounds, we write the symbol for each element found in the periodic table. Then we figure out the charge and write it as a superscript. Crisscross the charges into subscripts and simplify into the simplest ratio. For example, magnesium oxide has elements Mg and O with 2 plus and 2 minus charges. When we crisscross these charges, it becomes Mg2O2. But as 2 to 2 ratio can be simplified into 1 to 1 ratio, it will be MgO. Moving on to the ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are charged ions with two or more known metals. To read the ionic compounds with polyatomic ions, we follow the original rule for the section with the element. For the section with the polyatomic ion, we simply write its name. We would eventually need to memorize the important and commonly used polyatomic ions. To give an example of reading this type of ions, we read LiSO4 as lithium sulfate, with SO4 or sulfate being the polyatomic ion. The formula of ionic compounds with polyatomic ion is very similar to simple ionic compounds. We write down the symbol for each element and polyatomic ion with charge, then crisscross the charges into the simplest ratio. If there is a subscript for the polyatomic ion, we put the polyatomic ion in parentheses and then write the subscript. Like the example of ammonium carbonate, we write the polyatomic ion ammonium with one plus charge and carbonate with two minus charge. When we crisscross, we need to write down the charge for ammonium, but not the carbonate, as the charge of carbonate is one. So we write down ammonium in brackets, followed by a subscript of two and the normal form of carbonate. Compounds with transition metals start to get a bit more trickier. Transition metals are the ones in group 3 to 12 which does not have a set charge unlike the others but gets altered. However, there are exceptions to this as silver has a 1 plus charge and zinc has a 2 plus charge all the time. To read these compounds, we start with writing the name of each element and write the charge of transition metal as Roman numerals in brackets. This would be better understood with an example. For example, CuCl2 is made out of copper and chloride. The charge of copper is unknown as it is a transition metal and the charge of chloride is negative 1. We would write it like this, the form before we crisscross the charges. If we crisscross the charges, it becomes CuClx, and when we compare this to CuCl2, we can find out that the charge of copper is equal to 2. We put this number as the Roman numeral and it will look like this, copper chloride. Writing the formula is the exact opposite of this. We write the symbol for each element with the ionic charge. Again, the charge for the transition metal is the Roman numeral. Then we simply crisscross the charges into the simplest ratio. Take a look at this example of iron 3 chloride. We write down iron with the charge of 3 plus as shown in the Roman numeral and then Cl which has a negative 1 charge. It becomes FeCl3. Now, naming the covalent compounds. Covalent compounds occur between two nonmetals. To read this, we change the ending of the second element to IDE. We also add a prefix in front of the name to indicate the number of each atom for the element. However, the prefix mono is not used for the first element. Also, for the combinations of OO and AO, the first letter is omitted. For example, for CO2, we read it as carbon dioxide instead of monocarbon dioxide. For NO, we read nitrogen monoxide instead of nitrogen monoxide with two O's. We simply omit one O.
The formula for covalent compounds is very simple. We write down the element with charges and crisscross to their simplest ratio. However, we have to keep in mind that covalent compounds also include diatomic molecules like the Cl2. Take a look at this slide for additional information. These are the prefix and Roman numerals needed to know and below are the diatomic molecules. To give a tip on memorizing the seven elements of diatomic molecules, think of it as number seven with hydrogen. It is important to know the type of chemical reactions as there are some times when the IV asks you to write a certain reaction. Since this reaction is combining the reactants to form one product, the composition reaction is dividing the reactant into two simplest elements. Single displacement reaction is when one molecule displaces the other molecule in the compound. Double displacement reaction is when the compounds reach each other's molecules. Lastly, combustion reaction is the reaction that IB asks for the most. Combustion reaction is a reaction between carbon compound and oxygen, which always forms carbon dioxide and water. Also, always remember to balance every equation that you write. As you probably saw in the previous slide, the IB requires state symbols when writing chemical reactions. This is the state of elements in their natural state. Even though states may change in different conditions, it is recommended to know the state of elements in their natural state, as most of them are solid with some liquid and gas. Here are two practice questions. The first one says, write a combustion reaction between propane and oxygen. First, we write down propane, which is C3H8, and oxygen. Then, as all combustion reactions has the outcome of carbon dioxide and water, we write down CO2 plus H2O as the product. If we balance this whole equation and write it with state symbols, it becomes like this. The second question says to write the name of NaOH. As there are three elements, we can assume that one of these is a polyatomic ion. We need to know that OH is hydroxide, the polyatomic ion, as it is one of the common ones. Therefore, Na is red sodium, and OH is red hydroxide. So we read NaOH as sodium hydroxide. That's it for this video. Please leave a comment if you have any questions. Thank you!